All right, for more on this, I'm joined now by Lisa Lowe-Vaudrin from the Institute for Security Studies. Thank you so much for joining us. Could you tell us what on earth is going on? This is meant to be a parliament that represents voices from all over the continent, and it's become, it's become a boxing ring. Why, what is happening? Hi, Sally. Yes, it really is shocking, as you said, and very disturbing, because... Basically, the Pan-African Parliament has existed for almost 20 years now, um, since the start of the, the Af uh, African Union. And um, people have paid very little attention. There have been many problems within the PUP, um, corruption, uh, the issues of representation. The Pan-African Parliament actually is most often at loggerheads with the African Union in Addis Ababa and the heads of state, because the Pan-African Parliament actually has very little, you know, it has no legislative power, so its decisions are not enforceable. So it's been, it's been problematic. And then um, when um, EFF leader Julius Mamnema joined other high-profile um, South African parliamentarians and, and, and Southern African, I think the Southern Africa caucus um, in the uh, Pan-African Parliament became um, more vocal and stronger on this issue of rotation. And that is at the heart of the fight that started last week um, because most African Union institutions work on a rotational basis. So you have five regions and each region gets a chance. It's not always as democratic. And I presume the founding fathers, former President Tawag Mbeki and so on, who drew up the legislation of the PAP decided, no, this will be a vote. So whoever wins the vote, you know, becomes president and members of the Bureau. But the, the, the Southern Africa caucus then decided no, and the legal advice of the Pan-African Parliament then also supported this. So that's at the heart of this fight. But as you say, now it's completely... Um, you know, tensions have run uh, so high and, and people are accusing each other of all kinds of things. And actually what I find so disturbing is also the, um, the language divide and people calling each other, you know, um, long colonial lines, the French against the um, English speakers and the others. You know, it is really, really very concerning mm. that... Um, it has, it has come to this yeah. point. I, I mean, I'm, I'm just reading from an IOL article about what uh, Julius Malema uh, apparently said, and he's quoted as saying, um, don't make noise here, we're here to listen, don't make noise here, I will F you up outside, I will kill you outside, I will kill you, you do not know me. Um, is it possible to say who started this fight? Because, I, I, I mean, to get so angry about an issue of rotation when, as you say, the system has been in place for 20 years, uh, it, has someone upped the ante uh, within Parliament? Uh, and, and if so, who and why? Yes, yes. Look, uh, as I said, I think new um, uh, members uh, joined the Pan-African Parliament, were elected to the Pan-African Parliament. I'm, uh, you know, um, I saw an interview with Julius Malema who he, that says that he was the one who was threatened and that this Malian parliamentarian threatened to kill him. And so, you know, um, I was on the spot, so it's very difficult to say, you know, whose fault is it? Um, but there certainly is a new dynamic. And in a sense, I guess, you know, now everybody's paying attention to the Pan-African Parliament, uh, which was never the case before. But at the same time, you know, um, we at the ISS have lots of colleagues around the continent and uh, WhatsApp groups and so on. And, and, I, and, you know, it's almost like a culture shock. I saw the WhatsApps coming through um, from other regions of, of the continent, uh, you know, after last week's, uh, this, this um, altercation with Julius Malema, people being uh, shocked because I guess, you know, um, many of these parliaments in, in the home countries are not um, very democratic sometimes, you know. Um, they are, and that's also one of the sticking points with the, with the Pan-African Parliament, that some of the more, let's say, uh, democratic um, um, parliaments with, with the other institutional culture um, is up against others where mm. it's more hierarchical and... Uh, you know, with the institution yeah. and all what is, this, um, I mean, as you say, this is, this is a gathering of representatives from all over Africa. What is, what is likely yes. to be the fallout 
from this getting so incredibly nasty. I mean, this is an institution set up to facilitate dialogue. I'm not sure how effective it's ever been, as you say, because we don't hear much from it. But could this really severely strain relations uh, between South Africa and other African countries, for example? Um, yes, I presume, you know, the, the image of South Africa, but also Southern Africa, because remember, it wasn't just South African parliamentarians who pushed for this change, um, you know, uh, this rotation, um, might have taken a knock, um, but in the long run, it might even be beneficial that we can see, um, you know, a more efficient uh, Pan-African Parliament, more scrutiny on what they do. Um, let them then get the rotation that other AU organs have or not, or, you know, get them uh, sort, sort that out. Um, you know, other Africans look so closely at South Africa, they've seen what goes on in the parliament in Cape Town. They, this, you know, they won't be, uh, as I said, surprised. Um, uh, so it's not, you know, that, that, um, that there are ructions and that mm. the police come in and so on. But there's definitely... Um, yes, people are, are, are shocked and uh, let's say, um, you know, from other, from other parts of the continent, um, this is not the way uh, they do things in, in, in any case. But, but maybe, yeah, on the long run, maybe we should start taking the Pan-African Parliament seriously. Absolutely. Thank you so much. That was Liesl Lowe-Vaudren uh, from the Institute for Security Studies. Now.